you just read that beautiful wave, and you said, wow, that's a great wave you made. The server can take credit for riding the wave, maybe for the skills that they developed over their lifetime to surf that wave, and to take advantage of that wave, and certainly the Lord had put me in a position where I was prepared to do that, but I didn't create the wave. During that wave, I traveled all over the country to places like the, the New York City and San Francisco, and to Kansas City, and to Des Moines, all over the country, and everywhere I went in the country, I met people like you. I met people of faith. I met people who still believed in America. I saw the goodness, the greatness, and the genius of this country firsthand everywhere I traveled. I didn't believe that I could be in Manhattan, which people think of as a very, very crazy place, and I would meet great conservative people of faith. I could be in San Francisco or Marin, California, and the same. It didn't matter where I went. The remnant was there. And I would describe it as more than a remnant. I would describe it as the silent majority in the United States of America. And as I traveled around, I continually had the same experience, which is I love people. I've always loved people. Growing up, I was a kid who loved people. As an adult, I loved meeting people and building relationships with people. And I kept having an experience where I would meet people, and I would think, man, I really like this guy. I really like this woman. I really want to get to know him. And I would ask them, why are they the way that they are? Doesn't that ever make you curious to meet somebody and think, I really like this person? What is it that, why do I like them? Like, what made them this way? What's their life experience? And over and over, I heard this from people. I heard, oh, you didn't know me before I got Jesus. Or, oh, you didn't know me before I was saved. Or, you didn't know me before I was a Christian. And as a non-Christian, none of that made any sense. Right? But it was this thing that kept happening over and over. I describe it in hindsight that the Lord was hitting me in the forehead with a two-by-four. I just was too dumb to realize it. And eventually, I heard this so often, I experienced this so often, that that's why I started exploring faith. It's a long story how I actually came to faith and how I actually came to be a believer. It's not what I'm here to talk about. I just wanted to lay a foundation for you. If you want to hear that story, by the way, I did a podcast with the C.S. Lewis Society. I'm a little bit embarrassed about the title of it. They titled it. I didn't. Uh, but you can go to C.S. Lewis Society and look up, I Don't Need God. That's my story. <laughs> so uh, humiliating as that may be, I now know how much I need God. I feel really blessed to have become a believer. And so for that reason, this is really important. I would ask that you bow your heads in prayer with me because I can't start a meeting with that much. Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, thank you for being with us this evening. I know there are more than two gathered in your name in this room. Please help us to be humble. Help us to always remember that you set the path for us and that our job is to walk that path. Help us to surrender to you. Surrender is not easy for us as human beings, but we have to surrender to you completely if we are to do your will. Help us to abide in you, to know that you are with us, and to be with you at all times. Help us to have the patience to wait for you. We don't get answers in our own time, we get them only in your time, and sometimes not at all in our lifetime. So give us the patience to wait for you, Lord, and give us the calmness, the quiet, the peace of heart to be listening for you when you come to us in those quiet moments when we so need your voice, Lord. Please watch over this school and this campus, all these students who are forming up. Help them to walk in your ways, Lord. Please watch over our country. We are turning our country back towards you, Lord, so that you might heal our land. So we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for indulging me. Now back to our regu regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Do you think that the country is coming apart? <laughs> yeah, it's coming apart. If you watch the news, it doesn't matter whether you watch uh, whatever you watch, Real America's Voice. I was going to say Fox News, but I don't watch Fox News anymore. <laughs> so it doesn't matter whether you're watching conservative news, whether you listen to the hosts on Daily Wire like I do every day, whether it's Glenn Beck and The Blaze, or God forbid, maybe it's MSNBC. I have to listen to that stuff professionally, too. Whichever side of the aisle or whichever argument you're listening to, everybody is lamenting that the country is coming apart. And I think it is. And I'm here to tell you that that is not going to change. The country is going to continue coming apart. It is ripping apart, it seems, the very fabric 
of our society is being torn apart. And while everybody is lamenting this all over the country every day in all forms of media, I'm here to tell you it's awesome. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I know weird, huh? <laughs> I know it seems weird to people when I say this, and I want to explain to you, and over the course of this evening, I think you're going to agree with me. I'm going to explain to you why it's awesome. And we're going to back up, we're going to rewind a little bit, we're going to do a little